All right, welcome everyone. In this video, we're gonna cover missing cost basis warnings, why they happen, what causes them, how they work within CoinLedger, and ultimately how you can troubleshoot and solve these issues within your account. So let's jump right in. Here you can see we are in a CoinLedger account and a bunch of data from a, a variety of platforms and wallets has already been imported. Now, if we head over to the review or the transactions section, we can see that there are no missing cost basis warnings currently flagged. So to illustrate how they work, we are going to create one within CoinLedger. So a missing cost basis warning comes about when CoinLedger is detecting that you are selling an asset that it does not have record of you ever acquiring, right? So it's almost like you're selling this asset out of thin air and thus it doesn't have data behind what's the original purchase price that you of this asset. Of course, that's what's used to determine your gain or loss. It's, you know, how much you sold it for minus the original purchase price minus the cost basis. And so let's add a trade transaction to better illustrate what I just went through. So we are going to enter a transaction where we're trading, you know, let's say 50 Ethereum for some amount of Bitcoin. And let's say this happened about a month ago. So we're going to save that transaction down and we can see perfect. Now I've traded 50 Ethereum for four Bitcoin back in August 15th. Um, of this year. Now, when we navigate to the review transactions tab, we can see that there is indeed a missing cost basis being detected. And if we go to the to review tab, we can see that it's in fact when I'm disposing of that 50 Ethereum for four Bitcoin. Now we can drill into this here to get more information. We can see, you know, it's explaining this further. Based on your imported transactions, it's unclear how you originally acquired a total of about 39 Ethereum. So this is CoinLedger telling you, hey, you have data on how you acquired 11 of these 50 Ethereum, but we're missing original acquisition data for at least 39 about of them. And this could be in, inflating your overall capital gains by almost $92,000. <clears> so again, what's happening? CoinLedger has data on how this user acquired a lot of Ethereum, but not a full 50 worth. And so there's missing cost basis for about 39 of these. Now, we can troubleshoot this in a variety of ways, but first what you're going to want to do is go to the troubleshooting tab. And this is going to be a useful tab to, again, troubleshoot your missing cost basis warnings. Really what this is doing is it's sorting all of your transactions for a specific asset for you, and then recommending various problems that could be causing and attributing to this missing cost basis warning. Now, the most useful thing here is going to be this inflow and outflow chrono chron chronological list across all of your accounts for Ethereum assets. We can, we, this helps us identify, okay, when did my inflows come in and when did my outflows come in for Ethereum? And this will help me hunt down where am I missing that original acquisition price or source of that Ethereum that I'm missing basis for? So we can see, you know, originally, you know, I'm buying Ethereum in Coinbase. I've withdrawn some, I've traded away some. These are outflows of Ethereum, but everything's checking out so far. It's only when I get to probably the final transaction in this list, as we can see here, that yes, this is where the missing cost basis warning, let me get rid of this is occurring as we can see right here. And <clears throat> we can see that you know all of these inflows and outflows of Ethereum ultimately don't add up to having 50 at the time of this trade. So clearly I'm missing some data behind how I acquired that Ethereum. Now let's move myself back over here. <clears throat> now let's go back to the import step and show how this can be resolved. So. 99% of the time, again, missing cost basis warnings are because you haven't imported data from all of your sources. So remember, CoinLedger, CoinLedger needs the data from all of your wallets, exchanges, from the dawn of time that you got into crypto because that's how it's setting cost basis, right? If I acquired 39 Ethereum two years ago and I'm selling it today, I still need that original buy data so that the system knows, you know, selling it today, but from the cost basis acquired two years ago. 
So let's show how this can get solved. Let's add another transaction. And let's say I used fiat to buy Ethereum, maybe let's say two years ago. So I, I used the US dollar, let's say I spent four thousand dollars. This is not accurate, but to acquire Ethereum. <clears throat> And I bought, let's say, 50 of them. And this was, you know, maybe a year or so ago. There we go. April 21st, April 2021. And now I'm going to save this transaction. And voila, the missing cost basis warning is now gone. Why? Because we have shown CoinLedger how we originally acquired that 50 Ethereum that we sold on August 15th, 2023. How do we originally get it? Well, we paid $4,000 for it on April, 2021. <clears throat> so that is at a high level how missing cost basis works. Now there can be a variety of other reasons why you get missing cost basis warnings. And I would encourage everyone to read this help article thoroughly, but we're gonna go through a couple more examples now. So the next example we're going to go through is a deposit scenario. And so I want to pull a wallet that I have here. And I'm going to import from an Ethereum wallet address quickly, right here. And 14 transactions have been imported. Okay, so this is an important point. Within CoinLedger, deposits and withdrawals are not themselves setting basis. Why? Because we don't know what the taxable nature of these deposits or withdrawals are. Was this you just transferring crypto from one wallet you own to another, and thus it's not a taxable event, right? You're not disposing of the asset. Or was this your friend gifting you cryptocurrency? Or was this you earning cryptocurrency from staking rewards or from mining rewards, okay? All of those different types of deposits and withdrawals you know, can have taxable consequences. So a common cause of missing cost basis is when you haven't marked a deposit or withdrawal as its appropriate taxable transaction. For example, let's say that this deposit of Ethereum was actually staking income. What I would need to do to set the basis for this is to actually change the classification of the asset to staking income. Let me move myself and then save this down. Now we can see that that deposit turned to staking income. And what that is going to do is that's going to set the cost basis for 0 0.07 Ethereum to whatever the fair market value of this Ethereum was when you earned it from a staking perspective. Now, when you go to sell this Ethereum, we have basis for the 0.7 ETH. So this is another very common reason why you might get a missing cost based on the review step is, well, maybe you haven't actually marked your deposits as income. Other forms of income, right, are just regular income. Let's say you got paid as a, from a job, you'd wanna mark that as income. Maybe you earned it as interest rewards. Again, maybe a staking income. Maybe you received it as a gift from a friend. All of these you're gonna wanna mark so that that raw deposit gets assigned cost basis in the system. So that is another very common cause um, of a missing cost basis warning. There we go. <clears throat> now, another one that I want to run through is bridging transactions. So let me delete this so it doesn't clutter our view. <clears throat> so let's say you used, actually before we get to bridging, I wanna cover uncategorized transactions. So CoinLedger works by you know integrating with both centralized exchanges as well as blockchains themselves. And when CoinLedger is integrating with a raw blockchain, I want to snag this address for example purposes. You know, what it's doing is it's bringing in all of the debits and credits associated with any wallet address. And then it's categorizing them based on the smart contracts and protocols that that wallet address interacted with. Now, CoinLedger's integrations team is constantly integrating with more and more and more smart contracts, right? But 
we don't have 100% coverage. So at times, if CoinLedger detects that you have made a transaction with some smart contract or protocol that we haven't yet built a classifier for, you will get that transaction marked as uncategorized. And what this is doing is it's, it's essentially still allowing the records to flow through our system, but it's not actually counting this data as uh, towards your tax report. So here we can see this is an uncategorized transaction and it's clearly a trade, or it's most likely a trade of Ethereum for some amount of USDC. So this could lead to missing cost basis because the, the cost basis in this USDC isn't going to flow through because this disposal of Ethereum, you know, is what sets the basis for the USDC. So we need to fix this uncategorized transaction within CoinLedger so that the cost basis can flow through. So we're going to change the, trans the classification again and mark it as a trade. Now, this allows the cost basis to be set for this amount of USDC going forward. So when I dispose of the USDC, we now have a basis for it and then we will not get missing cost basis warnings for that transaction. So that's another common cause is uncategorized transactions. You should go and you know mark your uncategorized transactions when appropriate. And now the final scenario I want to go through that is probably the, the most complex of all the ones that I've gone through so far. Um, is a bridging scenario. So as those deep in the crypto world understand, to use new blockchains, you know, oftentimes you need to bridge your assets from one chain to the other. So I am going to import from an Arbitrum wallet address that I have here. And get that imported. And now what, what happened here, right, is I, or this user, bridged Ethereum from the Ethereum blockchain to the Arbitrum, you know, layer two blockchain. And we can see this is actually when I dispose of this Ethereum on Arbitrum, it's going to create a missing cost basis warning. Now let's look at it to learn a little bit more about why. So let's go to troubleshoot this again. So back on the troubleshooting flow, we can see for Arbitrum Ethereum, you know, I'm missing 1.1 Ethereum. This is, you know, inflating my report by up to $2,000. And we can review these hints. And these hints are actually right, right? So it's, we're seeing that there's two deposits, you need to review these. Um, and it's this deposit down here that is the culprit. Because this deposit is when I actually bridged Ethereum from the Ethereum main chain to the Arbitrum chain. So I'm going to need to mark this as a bridge. So to do this, I'm going to need to find the associate withdrawal transaction and merge them into a bridge. So let's bring that up here. All right, here we go. We can see that I have a withdrawal of 1.23 Ethereum at the same time as I have a deposit on the Arbitrum blockchain. Now this is a great sign that, you know, this is likely the bridge transaction itself. This is what we're looking for, right? Just when I <clears throat> withdrew Ethereum to the smart contract that's, you know, handling the bridged asset, and then it's leading to me having Arbitrum Ethereum on the Arbitrum blockchain. So what we can do is merge these transactions into a bridge and that, as you can see, solves the missing cost basis warning because that's essentially saying, hey, I traded this native Ethereum asset for this Arbitrum Ethereum asset. That allows your basis from your, your regular Ethereum to flow through to your Arbitrum Ethereum. And now when you dispose of this Arbitrum Ethereum on the Arbitrum blockchain, you know, the, the system now has your basis in that asset and it can accurately assign your gain loss. So. To review, missing cost basis works and they get detected when CoinLedger is detecting that you're selling an amount of asset that doesn't have record at this point of you acquiring or you know receiving through taxable transactions, you know, fiat buys, trades, um, income events like mining, staking, um, earning interest. 
Um, I would recommend everyone read through this article fully. It will also cover a lot of what I went through in this video. Um, and please drop any questions you have in the comment section and we will work to answer them for you as quick as we can. Um, so that concludes this video and that's all for now.